Hi, it's Warwick here from Beware. I'm the founder. We've been in business for about 16, 17 years. In fact, this is our 16th, sweet 16th year. And I uh, just wanted to do a quick snippet. I've been browsing, scrolling through the posts on the Facebook uh, page, uh, Beware ZA, uh, where, where our, all of our info and our B, B tips are and our articles and our links and things like that. So something, a question that came up today, <clears throat> it's a frequently asked question, and I want to cover it because I think it's vital that people understand what's going on with the large hive beetle and how to, uh, how to protect their hives from it and what steps they can be taking. So large hive beetle is in South Africa, uh, in Southern Africa, and it's a large, dark black beetle, um, probably about that size. Now, these guys are quite nasty. They can get in there. They can't really get, uh, you, know, def you know, the defense, their defense is pretty good. They've got an exoskeleton that's pretty hard and um, they can't really get bitten or stung by the bees. But what can happen is that they can boil the bees. They can boil around it. Um, and uh, basically what ends up happening is they can hold it down, boil around it, and then heat it up to the point where they can actually kill the large hive beetle. But when there's more than one of them, it's quite difficult, obviously, to, to keep up with all of that. So what happens is that then the bees, when, they, when, they, when that large hive beetle does get into the hive <clears throat> and they do manage to kill it, uh, then they'll cover it with a propolis seal as well. It's like a tomb. And uh, that's what you might find inside some of your hives after a period of time, especially after a couple of years. And especially if you haven't created a uh, entrance reducer on your hives. Now, us at Beware, when we sell our hives um, and our catch boxes, all of them have actually come with entrance reducers. What I, mean, what I mean by an entrance reducer is that literally, you know, most, a lot of hives are designed where the front, the whole front entrance is open, wide open. Because it's the difference between the floor, the lip of the floor and the brew box. Now, there's nothing wrong with that design. It's just that you, the bees can then naturally build a propolis wall and a propolis gateway or, or, or trellis, if you like, <clears throat> which can guard uh, and got, provide extra defensive um, position basically and also a better airflow inside the hive um, for climate control uh, but what ends up happening is that your large hive beetles are able to get in there the small hive beetle is obviously able to get in there and the wax moth is able to get in there much easier so are other little critters like spiders and uh, lizards even little frogs <clears throat> so um, to avoid all of that what you what you can do is you can get the entrance entrance uh, uh, reducers or entrance blockers from us in Centurion, we ship around countrywide and across borders as well. Alternatively, you can make your own. And literally what we do is we reduce the entrance to half and we only have two spots on either side. So you'll see in the photograph. And uh, what this does is it helps the bees to be able to defend themselves a lot better, A, from robbers as well, you know, from neighboring hives that, want, that are stronger perhaps than the, than, the, than, the, than the victim hive or the uh, defensive hive. <clears throat> and it also allows them to um, control the internal climate a bit better. Obviously, during the summer when it gets really hot, if you're in temperatures of 30 and above, 35 and above, it is probably a good idea to try and remove the entrance reducer just so that the bees then are able to have a better a flow, uh, airflow. But um, I've found that if it, <clears throat> I've just left my entrance reducers in place throughout, um, uh, throughout the beehives season, throughout the year, basically, throughout the calendar year. Something interesting though, is that when you're trying to catch bees and get bees and lure bees, it is much better for you to remove the entrance reducer in the beginning until a colony arrives, a tracking or splitting colony arrives there at the hive or the catch box and actually moves in. <clears throat> there at the hive or the catch box and actually moves in. <clears throat> the reason being is that the, the, the bees want quick access when they do arrive. They want to get there, they want to get inside and they want to set up shop. Okay, just like anyone, anybody that's, that's moved into a new location. So tip here is to make sure that you've removed the entrance blocker at first, just to allow the, catch, uh, the, the tracking swarms to get into your catch box and or your um, uh, lure box if you're using that for a, a brew box, if you're using that. Um, and ideally what you could do if you're using a brew box, remember that uh, 10 frame space is way too big for the ideal amount of space that a small trekking colony would like. In the beginning, they prefer a 30 liter volume, 30 to 35 liter volume. So uh, what you should do is use a space divider 
and uh, between frame five and six in a brood box is put a piece of cobra on the a piece of cobra in there or a backing board in there or some kind of divider in there so and then close the, other, the entrance off on the other side choose the side close one of them off <clears throat> leave the other one open obviously and then let the bees go in there but obviously remove the entrance entrance reducer at that point in time um, and only place the lure uh, the swarm lure on the left on the side that you're leaving open and or lemongrass etc all right cool large hive beetles entrance reducers and uh you know sort of fairly regular inspections anyway you should be looking out for them as well as the small hive beetle now quick note on the small hive beetle before we finish up here um it's endemic to south africa so our bees kind of live with them and they deal uh, pretty well with them unless there's a small colony and it's a new colony. Uh, what can happen is a lot of the tracking colonies have split from a parent colony and a lot of the small hive beetles can travel with them. The same with the browlers, little, little browler ticks uh, on the back of the bees. The browlers have a bit more of a better mutually sort of beneficial kind of relationship going on. Um, it's a recent research has been showing. So don't worry about too much about browlers. Uh, the bees can kind of take care of them on their own. Small hive beetles, pretty much they can do the same thing. But if you do feel like you're getting a overrun, your colony is being overrun by small hive beetles, then you can get hold of us and get hold of the small hive beetle uh, traps. And uh, it fits, it's a plastic, uh, <clears throat> plastic trough that basically fits between, I'll show you a photograph in the edit after this as well. <clears throat> but uh, it fits between the two two frames inside the brood chamber and uh, you fill it up with diatomaceous earth and or uh, vegetable oil vegetable oil being secondary choice because it can go a little bit it can go off over you know over two weeks time it can go off inside the house especially if the temperature is like 36 plus degrees inside there um, uh, with the ambient temperature kind of being 36 degrees constantly <clears throat> while the bees are present at the ideal temperature inside the hive so uh, that's how you can handle the small hive beetles. All right, so cool. Keep the questions coming and I'll keep the videos coming. This is Warwick from Beware. If you're interested in our online bee course, uh, we do a beginner's masterclass online, which is um, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash new bee, N-E-W-B-E-E -E -E dot beware dot co dot za forward slash webinar two dash O or zero. Um, yeah, it would be zero. Uh, otherwise, check the link below and uh, we'll see you on the next uh, video. Ciao. Work out.